All right, so what to do now that we're going to have not the same denominator? All right, so if we're not going to have the same denominator, we need to talk about how we're going to proceed. All right, so I had you guys read these two pages here, this one about finding the lowest common denominator, and then talking about that process that you learned about probably end of elementary, middle school, or wherever you learned it, about how to do it. And you did it in the rewind. Okay, so you've already done this. The only change again is that we're going to have variables. Okay? So the way that I always tell students to approach this is when you look in the denominators, if you can factor one or both, you should do that. All right, so when I look at x plus 2, can I factor that? No. No, you cannot. But when I look at x squared minus 4, yes. that is factorable. No. That is a special case, the difference of two squares. So that factors as x minus 2 and x plus 2. And again, that order does not matter. Okay, so if you wrote x plus 2 times x minus 2, that's fine as well. All right, so now when you look at this denominator and when you look at this denominator, you'll see that they have something in common. They both have x plus 2. So in order to have the same denominator, what does this guy need? x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply the bottom times x minus 2. And so now, do I have the same denominator? Yeah. Yes, but I need to do something to the top as well so I don't change the expression. Also multiply times x minus 2. All right, Because if you look at that, x minus 2 over x minus 2 is really just another way of writing the number 1. So you're not changing the value. Like in the rewind, when you guys multiplied by 2 over 2 or 3 over 3, you're not changing the expression. You're just getting a common denominator so that you can put them together. Everybody good with that? Yeah. So if you can factor either of the denominators, you should do that. So let's find my new numerator for the left side. What's x times x minus 2? x squared minus 2x. All right, so that's my numerator on the left side. I know my common denominator is going to be what now? x minus 2 times x plus 2. If you wrote it as x squared minus 4, would that be correct? Yes, that's the same thing. All right, but you'll see why here in a little bit, why I kept it factored. All right, did I do anything to the other expression? No. Bless you, I did not. So that means I'm going to write plus... Negative 8. What if that would have been subtraction? What would I have done with everything over here? I would have made them the opposite. And I would have done addition. All right, that's my preference. Again, you don't have to do that. You can do subtraction. All right, so if you look at this, all right, I have x squared minus 2x plus negative 8. I can make that a little bit nicer. Instead of writing plus negative 8, how can I write that? Just minus 8. And technically, we're done. But what did I tell you guys in the first micro lecture? When you get finished, what should you look to see if you can do? Factor. And if you look in the numerator, can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 8 and add to give you negative 2? Yes. And what is it? X minus 4 plus 2. Very good. It is x minus 4 times x plus 2. That's my numerator. How I got that was negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And what's a negative 4 plus 2? Negative. negative 2. So that's what you're thinking. Multiply to give you the last one and add to give you the middle one. All over x minus 2 times x plus 2. So notice, since I kept it factored in the denominator, I have a common factor that I can do what with? Cross out because it makes 1. So what is my simplified expression? Again, this is the answer, but if this causes you to want to cross things out, then keep your parentheses on it, all right? Because those are not the same factor. Everybody good? All right, so sometimes you might be able to factor them at the end. We're not ready yet. It just says also to identify values that make the uh, expression undefined. So what values can x not be equal to? 
positive 2 or negative 2. So you should write x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2. All right, so you're looking to find common denominators. Common denominators to add or subtract these expressions. All right, go ahead.